very hard to imitate free falling without actually jumping out of the plane. It's the largest tunnel in the world. It's the most powerful tunnel in the world at the moment. We can have wind speeds from zero up to 180, 190 miles an hour. Um, every, every slight move of your body is going to affect which way you which way you move around the tunnel. If you straighten your legs, you're going to go forwards, bend them, you go backwards. At the same time, with your arms do the same thing. Originally, we were going to have two people jumping out of an aeroplane, diving into this hole for real, and then we were going to do a couple of inserts with Daniel and Olga. I never liked in parachute sequences hang actors against uh, green screens and shoot them with, with a fan because you feel it's not real. Ultimately we came up with that idea of a body flight and we would put the actors in there and it would simulate basically their facial expression they would have if they would have been really in the air. I remember after 15 minutes I came out, I felt like squeezed level. Now I can go in all the time. Like basically I think I built strength. Because you feel like you're lying on the air but actually every muscle works. It's it's really weird, I never thought it was like this. Everything you see is based on them or their stunt people, as really done, but the camera's not real. Because we couldn't put the camera 100 yards away from them when they were doing that, because they were in a wind tunnel. So we are able to take them through, let's say, 21st century photography and make them, put them farther away. In the real world, the elaborate art gallery set is now complete, and the unit move in to begin a complicated month-long shoot on the set. We have one of the uh, finest actors in the world dangling from the ropes, 40 feet in here, and spinning them around and trying to see if we could, uh, you know, slam them into things. Especially if you're doing stunt sequences, are long and they're hard and they hurt, and it's just, you know, why would you want to tell anybody that it's going to be like that? Because they'd walk away. So I think Olga kind of got a bit of a, a kind of a shock when we, you know, we suddenly were on a boat for two days, and you know, there's a, there's a nurse applying, you know, band aids to your knee every ten minutes, and there's a cut here, and there's a headache here, and this is the way it is. It's, it's, it's part of the process of filming. It's kind of, it's, it, it, to make it look as realistic as possible and to make it sort of, you know, have resonance on the screen, we have to be in the boat when it's making the leap. God. It was very important for me that Daniel and Olga both are on the boat and sort of performing the stunts themselves in the sequence that we can really feel that they need each other to get out of the situation. The boat chase was uh, pretty impressive. I thought, you know, we're going to fake the speed. I thought, oh, it's a movie, we're going to be faking the speed. No, they weren't. They actually do it. When you practice, you kind of attach, you have a helmet, you know, you have all the protection. But on the day, you don't have it. To allow Mark to concentrate on the actors, second unit director Simon Crane was brought in to prepare the complicated boat action when filming began in Panama. We did a fantastic boat sequence in The World Is Not Enough, so it's trying to better that. So what we're trying to do is just make it much more aggressive, much more natural, much more real. It's just hard-hitting action, no CG. Which is, you know, Bond were always 90% for real, 95% for real. And here's real guys doing real action. 